Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to get right into the weekly reading for the sign of Leo. All right, Leo, you're up. Okay. Um, so this is going to be for November 24th to the 30th. And we're going to get right into pulling out your romance angel messages along with your uh, animal spirits. And if you'd like to get a private reading, of course, you can follow that link at the top of your screen. Private readings are by live private stream online and we interact with each other and uh, you go ahead and uh, get your reading. Now, let's get right into it. Calling in your soulmate. Give your relationship a chance. This has come out a couple times. And honeymoon. Beautiful. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. All right, Leo, give your relationship a chance in calling in your soulmate. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's do it. We're going to pull out your animal spirits. Now, of course, my regulars know I don't really get into the romance angel messages. I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory, right? You're calling in your soulmate. Uh, the angels are asking you to give your relationship a chance, and some of you may be enjoying some holiday time together. So these are really straightforward uh, messages, but let's see a little deeper with your animal spirits to see what kind of energy you may be resonating with this week or tapping into. Uh, it can indicate stages or paths that you're entering or people that you may be dealing with. All right. So Leo, let's get into it. I am a Sagittarius with a moon in Leo. So of course I resonate with these readings sometimes very much. B energy, air, a regular player, on my readings for my collective. The hyena. This is the second time this animal has shown up now. Hyena is a very a rare animal to show up, but we'll get into that. And the oyster. The great keeper of secrets. All right. Another animal spirit that is fairly rare in terms of my readings and my collective. But we're going to get into it. So B. B energy. Beautiful, strong energy. Uh, the bees, of course, air element. And you can see that green around the bee is indicative of the creativity that the bee brings to all of its, you know, uh, all of the work that it does or all of the tasks that it uh, tries to accomplish. Anyone who resonates with bee energy is a real delight to be around. This person is going to be extremely hardworking. They're also the great Democrat. The bee is the one in the social group that wants to make sure everyone is happy, everyone is able to do their part. Um, they're very enthusiastic. They're very sort of, you know, buzzing around, you know, communicating. It's an air element. So we're talking about somebody who communicates extremely well with everyone. This can also be the great meeting. Mediator. When there's a problem in a group dynamic or amongst friends, the B energy person is going to be the one who everyone goes to to try to mediate or to try to talk to and say, hey, you know, can you help us fix this or mend this? Very strong, very nice energy indeed. Now, the hyena is a fire element, Leo, and the hyena is associated with laughing, wit, sarcasm, and humor, right? The hyena is oftentimes the person who will act like the class clown or the group clown. Um, they're always turning everything into a joke. Nothing is really taken seriously, but oftentimes this hides a deeper level of um, pain, right? Oftentimes this is a person who is laughing to hide their pain or to hide uh, sadness that is very, very deep. Uh, oftentimes people who resonate with this energy can even be a little bit difficult to be around because their humor is biting, right? It can be, their sarcasm can be a little bit of a sting, you know? Um, and oftentimes it feels like the, the, the energy that they're bringing, uh, the, the humor that they're bringing, is, it's, it's unsettling because you know it comes from a place of hurt rather than a genuine place of, of wanting to be sort of funny, you know what I mean? Uh, this is somebody who's really struggling with a lot of inner demons and, um, yeah, oftentimes this will require someone, you, you know, somebody to have a real conversation with them and try to get behind that mask of humor and wit and sarcasm more than anything to get into a deeper issue. Now the oyster. Oyster is water elemental 
And the oyster is considered the great keeper of secrets. The oyster, of course, we find pearls in oysters. So not only is this the keeper of secrets, but oftentimes oyster individuals resonate with uh, this this feeling or this, this, this uh, I want to say they have a, they have something special, right? They have something special to give, but they are they are hesitant to let the world see it, right? Uh, oftentimes, oyster individuals really keep a hard exterior to hide, uh, you know, to hide these things because they're not sure how they're going to be received. Um, and, and oyster individuals are really encouraged to try and open up more. This is a water element, so we're talking about somebody who really kind of hides, hides, you know, they hide themselves. Uh, they keep secrets about things um, that are important to them that really need to come out, right? It's time to bring some of your deeper feelings to the surface. And certainly if there's something that you have to share with the world, it's time to share it, all right? All right, let's get right into it, Leo. You may be dealing with somebody, by the way, who's resonating with this energy, um, if, you're, if we talk about giving your relationship a chance, you may be dealing with somebody who is not allowing uh, their, their inner sort of feelings to come to the surface or to really let some of their beautiful qualities shine because they just don't have the self-esteem or the confidence to do so. All right, guys, so let's get right into your forecast. We're going to pull around anywhere from four to eight, three card spreads for you, Leo, just to see what you may or may not be resonating with this week. And of course, just take what applies to you and uh, disregard the rest. Now, if this reading resonates with you, to, you know what you can do for me is to like it and subscribe. Uh, you can leave me a comment. I do love reading my comments. I do try to reply to all of them. Um, and all of this really helps my channel to grow and helps me to continue uh, to give you these readings because this is really something that I love to do. And uh, I really enjoy it when, um, you know, when my watchers let me know that they've gotten something out of the reading. All right, Leo, let's get into it. For those of you who'd like to donate to my channel, uh, you can go ahead and find the link for that in the description. And to those of you who have donated to my channel, thank you so much for your kind support. All right, Leo, we have Three of Wands, Queen of Wands, and Ten of Wands. So some of you are coming into this week <clears throat> with a feeling of having to wait on an issue, right? You're being, t you know, life is making you pause. Three is, of course, the number for bonding, loyalty. Um, three of Wands is the card for virtue, but patience is a virtue. And a lot of times Three of Wands talks about having patience to allow something to unfold naturally. Oftentimes when three of wands comes into your life, you're raring to go, but you're just being forced to stop and take a lay of the land uh, to see what your next step is. But more than anything, um, three of wands comes in when you may be moving at a certain speed, but something else needs to come into you, a person, an event, information, whatever the case is. Life is kind of forcing you to put on the brakes to give this thing, whatever it is, time to come in. Sometimes, uh, you know, we're not moving at the same pace, right? And sometimes we're kind of forced to stop for a minute because in order to make the next step, to make the best next step, we have to wait for something uh, important to come. And so Three of Wands talks about that. You enter the week with this kind of feeling of having to sort of just sit back. Um, and Queen of Wands is what you're met with. And so... Interestingly enough, Queen of Wands could very well be, I'm going to say in this scenario, <clears throat> it's going to be someone who comes into you uh, who's very strong, right? Who's who can be very influential to you. I'm going to say Queen of Wands is that queen. She is the master of self, you know, of self reinvention, of self transformation. I feel strongly that this is going to be someone who comes into you and teaches you something. She's going to show you something. The Queen of Wands is, in a lot of ways, she is very much like the High Priestess. However, she's a little bit more forthcoming with her teachings and her wisdom than the High Priestess is. The High Priestess is very stoic and she withholds, right? 
Um, but the Queen of Wands, uh, she oftentimes will be there to help you through a difficult time or through, um, through a life lesson. She is very, very picky, though, of who she will help. All right. The Queen of Wands does not show up for everyone, and she has to be sure that her help will be received properly. However, I believe this is going to happen for you, Leo, and as a result of it, this sort of either um, conversation, meeting, you know, engagement that you have with this personality is going to lead to you being able to lay down some burden. She's going to show you something or teach you something or open up your mind to something that's going to allow you to finally lay down uh, certain burdens or certain baggage that you've been collecting. Ten of Wands is associated, these Ten of Wands are associated with baggage that we collect from difficult times, right? Uh, this baggage could be anything. They could be uh, negative self-image, low self-esteem, uh, you know, toxic energies that you've adopted and taken into yourself as a result of everything that you've gone through. But when we when we come to a Ten of Wands, you've realized that this baggage that you perhaps at one point thought was a crutch or was helping you in some way, you realize that it's, it serves no purpose. It is no help. And more than anything, it is blocking your progress and blocking your forward momentum in a way that you, you don't know where you're going anymore. You're, be, you're lost now. It's time to lay them down. It's time to step up and uh, stand up straight and just move forward into life. This is a beautiful ending to a long period of trials, tribulations, and burdens. And all of this comes as a result of this meeting that you have with this Queen of Wands or this encounter that you have with this Queen of Wands. This could be somebody new or it could be somebody that you've already known for quite a long time. But in any case, this is a very dynamic sort of encounter. Fire, wands are fire, and you are fire, Leo. And so in a lot of ways, um, this person is definitely going to, I mean, Queen of Wands is, is very close to Leo energy. So in a lot of ways, uh, this person, you know, you're going to vibe very strongly with them. And the way they communicate with you is going to be right on your level in a sense to really get you to understand something about yourself. Could be very well that you're resonating with a little bit of oyster energy and this Queen of Wands individual comes in and helps you sort of uh, let go of that shell. Very, very nice indeed. Ace of Cups, Leo, Queen of Pentacles, and the Emperor. Oh, okay, well, Ace of Cups, you come into this week really thinking about a love connection, calling in your soulmate. Uh, you're met with a Queen of Pentacles energy. I'm gonna say for some of you, Oh, I have such a nice feeling from this. Uh, you you are working very hard on your business. Queen of Pentacles talks about the watery aspect of Earth. Uh, she understands what it takes to accomplish things. She's come from nothing. The Queen of Pentacles is the one who has built herself up by pure blood, sweat, and tears by herself, but by always infusing all of her goals with her emotional power, her, her, her feeling, her desire. You can see that she's looking at the pentacle almost as if it's her child. And so for Leo, a lot of you have been working really, really hard to manifest a material goal, perhaps in your career or uh, in, your, in your business or your finance, right? But this is something also that is very close to your heart. This is not just a nine to five punch a clock, right? So oftentimes this can indeed be an actual business that that you're setting up or a path, a life path that is what you want to do for your life that will bring you finances, right? But it's also what you want to do with your life, right? It's very, it's almost like a, a calling in a way. Um, and you're working with that, but you come into this week with this Ace of Cups, this new sort of opportunity for a great, great love, and you're met, and by the end of the week, you come out with Emperor Energy. I'm gonna say for some of you, this emperor is someone who has their eye on you, this associated with Aries energy. Leo, somebody, your soulmate is coming in, all right? And your soulmate is coming in in the form of a fiery individual, uh, somebody who's very, very um, dominant, very strong, authoritative, they're very stable. 
um, and they have their eye fixed on you. Uh, this is definitely a case of calling in your soulmate. This is going to be a new connection. Or it could indeed be a connection with somebody that you've known for quite some time, but you did not know that they were in love with you. Well, now is the time. They are no longer holding back. They see that you're working along. They see you're working away on your plans, right? And you're kind of got your head down and busy in your business. But when they show up, it's going to be like, bam, I'm here. I'm the emperor and I want you, Leo. Very, very nice energy. The world. Nine of Wands, Ace of Swords. Some of you come into this week with a feeling of being exactly where you should be. The world is the energy that comes into your life when uh, fate has its eye on you, as it were, right? Destiny has its eye on you. And all of the obstacles are being cleared. It's almost as if the way is being made clear for you to just really very easily follow, uh, follow your path. And this is also a way of life reaffirming to you that you are indeed on the right path. A lot of times what comes in with the world energy as well is that when we feel, uh, when we come to a stage in our lives that we feel like we are doing what we're supposed to be doing and we're at exactly where we're supposed to be, this is when we begin to accept <clears throat> all of the trials and tribulations that we've gone through to get here. You know, you ever see like a famous person, you know, an artist or someone or a businessman, anybody, you know, and, and they're, they're being interviewed and, and they say something like, you know, it was all worth it. Everything I've been through was worth it. I would never change anything. That's the feeling the world card brings to you, this feeling of acceptance of everything in your life because you realize and you can see very clearly how every little step along the way has really led to this point in your life and where you are now is exactly where you want to be. You're met with the nine of wands in a sense that there is one area in your life that still needs a little bit of work. There's still a last hurdle. Some of you have a responsibility or a burden that you've been shouldering for quite some time and it's about to be lifted. However, Nine of, Sword, Nine of Wands, excuse me, does talk about digging deep and pulling out that last little bit of energy to get to the Ten of Wands. We saw the Ten of Wands earlier. The Ten of Wands is when we're laying down this, down this baggage, this burden, uh, all, of, all of the sort of knocks that you've accumulated as a result of this path or stage in your life. But with the Nine of Wands, we're not quite there yet, right? It's not a Ten, it's a Nine. We're not quite there yet. And this is the stage at which you're just beginning to understand right? That you need to come out of this stage, that enough is enough. You've had enough turmoil. You've had enough collecting baggage, collecting this burden or carrying this burden. You see it for what it is. The character is looking back and realizing, wow, I've really accumulated a lot. It's time to really lay it down, but I have a little bit further to go before I can do this. This can also be indicative of an actual responsibility that you have. For instance, taking care of a loved one who is sick or burdening the response, you know, carrying the responsibility or the burden of taking care of, you know, a friend's child or, you know, it's, it's a responsibility that you do because you feel that it's the right thing to do, but it's still a responsibility. It's still a burden and it still takes its toll. For some of you, this is coming to an end, but you still need to make it to the finish line. You end this week with an ace of swords in a sense that <clears throat> You get very, cla very clear sort of inspiration and ideas coming in on how to move forward, how to get over this last little hump. I'm going to say for some of you, this is almost like a burden that has been left over from your previous life in a way. You know, you're about, you're on your path to this new kind of stage where everything is working out for you, but something else is still, it's almost like it's still holding on to your coattails. You just want to get rid of it. How do I get rid of this last little sort of you know, uh, responsibility that I just don't want to have anymore. It's not mine. I've taken it on, but I'm done with it. The answer comes this week in the form of Ace of Swords. It's a victory. You realize, okay, this is what I need to do uh, to finally come out of this stage or this path. And uh, it's really great because it feels like the last piece of the puzzle to make this whole feeling of, of the world energy that came in complete. Four of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, 
and we have judgment. This is going to be the last spread. Four of Pentacles talks about having a feeling of your finances being threatened, um, just being uneasy, right? Uh, you're trying to hold on. Things are still a little bit difficult for you right now. But Four of Pentacles, more than anything, talks about holding on to stability and finances and business or career that you've already worked for, but feeling like something is threatening that stability. Oftentimes, this energy can lead to a miserly attitude or a greedy attitude, but all of that really comes from from fear. Being a miser or being greedy comes from the fear that you're going to lose everything or that you're not going to have what you need. And so you hold on even tighter. However, I'm not saying this is what you're doing, Leo, but I am saying that you feel this week a little bit of financial pressures, right? A Knight of Cups comes in. A person comes into your life uh, who wants to help you. They want to help you. They may be resonating very highly with B energy. Knights are air. Okay, so when we see the Knight of Cups, we have the air aspect of cups, <clears throat> the communication, right? This is why the Knight comes in and wants to communicate. They want to be very romantic. They may not often be as committed, obviously, as the King of Cups, um, but you, nevertheless, they, they come into you with a real sort of intention of making a love connection with you, expressing their love to you in a very strong way. Um, but oftentimes the night is not that sure of its feelings. The night can today, the night can love you and, and want to be with you. And then tomorrow his feelings change. And it's not like he's trying to screw you over, trying to hurt you. But the night is just uh, beginning to find out who he is and beginning to search his feelings. You can see that the water here, the river of his emotions is very scant. It's not very deep like you would see on the uh, King of Cups or the Queen of Cups, right? Queen of, by the time you get to the Queen of Cups, she knows exactly who she is, you know? But the Knight of Cups nevertheless comes in this week like a knight in shining armor for you, Leo, and really sort of saves the day. Uh, and you end the week with judgment in the sense that I'm going to say for some of you, this could be someone that perhaps you had a falling out with. Um, this could be your lover. You guys may have had a, a breakup recently. Give your relationship a chance. It's definitely the energy here. I want to say that it could very well be that uh, you were with this night before and things didn't necessarily work out or you had a split of some kind, right? Um, and since that split, you've been struggling financially. They come back into you this week. Not so much, I guess, in a sense of reconciliation, but more in a sense that they just can't leave you alone because they don't want to see you suffer. They don't want to see you go through the stress. And so they're coming back in because they do have genuine love for you. And you end this week with judgment in the sense that there's forgiveness. You know, the fact that they're coming in to help you with the stress right now really makes you feel warm, Leo. It makes you feel loved. It makes you feel like they truly desire to help you out. Uh, and in a lot of ways, this is, like I said, this is a case of giving your relationship a chance after a split because someone has come back really to show and prove that they're there for you. And of course, you realize yourself that perhaps you've been a little bit harsh on them. Maybe because of the stresses you've been going through financially, you may have been letting some of that out on them. And so that may have been some of the cause for the split. Judgment talks about taking responsibility on both sides for being hypercritical, being over judgmental, and being a little bit too severe. And realizing really that uh, we all have a part to play when, when things go badly, right? It, it's never just one person's fault. And this sense of forgiveness and wanting to reconcile and certainly this warm feeling that this person, this Knight of Cups is giving you by coming back in to help you out and at least emotionally help you out really makes you feel like giving the whole relationship another chance. It's very nice indeed. All right, Leo, this is your reading, November 24th to the 30th. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, uh, comment below. Uh, if you'd like to get a private reading, follow the link at the top of your screen. If you'd like to donate to my channel, the link for that is in the description. And thank you all for your donations. But for right now, Leo, have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.